Well, this uh, show format should probably take a similar journey as it did uh, after the Arizona State or the Colorado game. The, they seem to be following a pattern in which we could first go to you, Matt, to uncover the ills of the Trojans and then kick it to Tim and, and see what uh, his counterpoints might be. I mean, where do we begin? I think uh, a couple beginning points for uh, the state of USC football. I think the first thing that I would start with is, you know, what happened after the Colorado game? <laughs> Lots of things. But one thing in particular was Bryson Shaw comes to the defense of Alex Grinch, you know, passionately sticks up for his defensive coordinator and says, you know what? It's not Grinch's fault. It's us. Players are letting him down. Players aren't playing well enough. We aren't doing our jobs. So, like, I'm not being critical of Bryson Shaw for saying that. Like, you want to go to bat for your coach? You believe in him? Fine. But when you then say you you believe in your coach, and you you when you say publicly, it's not him, it's us, and then us doesn't show up in the first quarter, and USC's defense gets trucked, and was clearly not prepared to play. Where what are we left with, right? Where are we at when you say the coaches are not the problem and then you don't show up in the first quarter? Like you're acting as though you're not being coached well. You're acting as though whatever the coaches told you during the week, you didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to it. And I know this was a look ahead game before Notre Dame. We all knew that this was a trap game. Like I get it. But like if you're going to say in public, we trust our coaches. And then you just completely no show the first quarter. Like, what kind of message are you sending? You know, what kind of statement are you making? And that that is just extremely concerning, right? Because, like, if, if Bryson Shaw doesn't say that in public after the Colorado game, you know, I'm not talking about it right now. But he did. He did go public. And like, when you go public, at either as an athlete or a coach, like you're like you're not obligated to say certain things in public you're making that choice to put things out into you know the, the the on the airwaves and put it out in the bloodstream of media commentary and you know it's going to be a talking point if you bother to go public with something once you go public once you make that decision once you cross cross that uh rubicon you know you then need to back it up as a player and the trojans did not back it up as players and that just tells me that whatever alex grinch is trying to do it's not getting through and and let's also remind ourselves this is the other i think really significant point that usc hasn't played anybody <laughs> usc has not played anybody uh which is particularly good you know san jose state nevada stanford arizona state you know colorado might be a bowl team like colorado might be six and six um but you know, like USC has played six teams, which probably aren't going to win more than six games. And, and four of those teams might not win more than three. And so six and oh is great. Like, like, like that is true. And you do, you do need to win your clunkers, which USC has done a couple times, but this team's not improving and this team is soft and this team is not disciplined and you can't just flip the switch. Now I will, I will say that you know, USC has probably been in energy conservation mode mentally as well as physically because of the nine straight weeks and all the other things that we've talked about, you know, and it's a, it's a long season and it's a grind and like, you know, you're not going to have the same emotional intensity for Arizona State or for Stanford that you do for Notre Dame and Oregon and Washington. Like, I get that. We've all been there. We can all accept that. But when your performance is sloppy and uneven three straight weeks against teams, you should be, you know, drumming by 30, 40 points like that, that like that's different. So, you know, in other words, the Arizona game was not a one off. Right. It wasn't just an isolated instance of USC being sloppy and unfocused against an inferior team. We've seen this th three weeks, especially, you know, two out of the last three. Arizona State was significantly worse than. Colorado, and then this Arizona game was worse than Arizona State. The consistency of the sloppiness, the consistency with which this team is not locked in, that's certainly alarming. And so maybe maybe Notre Dame 
wakes up this team and you get that big game focus. And maybe this game also creates a dynamic in which, you know, USC has been playing what I call mental defense, not talking about tactical defense, mental defense. Like you're taking everyone's best punch. Everyone who plays you views you as their Super Bowl. Like Arizona <laughs> schemed and coached this game really hard. It's like USC was the game of the season for the Wildcats. We were saying the similar things after the Arizona State game. Kenny Dillingham was just throwing the whole kitchen sink at USC. Like the, the Trojans were getting things from the Sun Devils they weren't getting from anyone else. It was very similar against Arizona. Like Arizona, Arizona really studied up in terms of how to defend USC's receivers and passing game. Lincoln Riley really didn't adjust to running the ball against a light tackle box until midway through the game. Uh, you know, that's part of the U slow start for USC. But this larger concept of mental defense, USC is just trying to protect itself, absorb the opponent's punch. That needs to change. USC needs to stop playing mental defense and whatever mental holistic energy it's been conserving because it, because it knows how much of a grind the full 12 game season is you can't conserve energy anymore now's the time for you to go balls out you know all the way and you're on the attack you're usc you're the trojans you have lincoln riley you have caleb williams stop worrying about the opponent's best punch you throw the best punch you're you are not supposed to weather the storm anymore you're supposed to become the storm that mentality needs to set in for USC. You, know, you played the games that you were totally expected to win, but now you're getting to Notre Dame, Utah, Oregon, Washington. It, don't worry about the best punch that the opponent will throw. You can throw your best punch. If you play your best, it doesn't matter what the opponent does. USC needs to take on an attack mentality and stop playing mental defense during this Notre Dame game. Tim, this game took us from the level of, oh, this is a sloppy game. This is a poor performance. USC isn't putting this team away, but there's real no threat of loss here, too. This game is in jeopardy. This game is this close one play from being over as a loss. So I would categorize it in, in a different way. In isolation, this game really wouldn't be much, but based on a, a kind of a start to look like a pattern and issues that are not being addressed, same issues, you know, difficulty covering people down the deep middle, uh, tackling in the boundary and in, in, in the perimeter, um, give it, giving up huge chunk plays. It, it's, it's becoming, and, and, and just poor tackling in general, it's becoming an issue along with, um, the real story here, I mean, the defense, we know what the defense is. Look, at the beginning of the year, no one here thought that this defense was going to be a top 20 defense. If anyone did, they were sold a, a, a really bad bill of goods because we knew what this defense is really what it is, by the way. Points per game, this team is, you know, if you take out the overtime, and you really should, you know, you get take away 13 points in overtime, they held them to 28 points. You, you average 28 points, that means they're actually giving up 24 points a game. Now, the balance of that is, is like, again, who have they played? But that's, you know, it's 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 a defense that has holes in it. But anyone out there that thinks that this is not a better defense than it was last year is completely off base. Just, just completely off base. There are issues, and uh, they've run out of time. They, they no longer have time to fix the things that are still ailing them. So it's going to end up being some losses. It's going to. Unless somehow this day is figured out in week seven, there, there are going to be losses. But let's also take a look at some of these teams. We're cracking on SC for for um, for being down this game. I don't think Washington trailed, but they, you know, it was close. It, it came down to an onside kick, and and then um, Arizona held. Uh, sorry, Washington held off Arizona. So it's not like this. Washington blew the doors off of Arizona at all, and we didn't hear a peep about Washington. Not a peep. You know, they don't drop any, right? Um, this is college football, and if you don't come to play, and Lincoln Riley said himself, it's my job to get the guys ready. They walked out. They slept, walked through the first quarter. They absolutely slept. It was putrid. You know, the defense couldn't stop anybody, and, and the offense couldn't get three and out, three and out, three and out. It, it, was, it was poor. They, after 17 minutes, they found themselves down 17 points. Down 17 points. 
This team hadn't been down the entire year, not even for one play, had they trailed the season. And they, you know, they they got back in the game because of the defense. If you look at the, if you look at, if I told you guys, here's the stat line: 14 for 25, 205 yards, right? No interceptions. And uh, uh, so 56% completion percentage. That's very pedestrian if, at best. When was the last time you heard Caleb with 205 yards with the, maybe the Oklahoma State game? They came out flat as hell. Arizona came out jacked up after last week saying, hey, we can do this. We just went toe-to-toe with Washington. And they took it to USC and just smashed them. Um, to USC's credit, the defense that's much maligned, you don't come back down 17 points unless your defense starts making stops. And, and they did. And it was really a situation of, of, you know, where they played the middle two, the second and third quarters. The defense was solid, you know. First quarter was horrible. Third quarter wasn't bad, but they still had some of the issues they were having. They are having trouble with that, that toss play. Just absolutely getting gashed on the ground. And there's two weeks in a row, Coleman and Scadabo, you know, I talked about it on the call show. They made these guys look like uh, Herschel Walker or, or like a, a Christian Okoye, right? A guy, if you don't stop him right away, he's going gonna to steamroll people. And this is these guys are not that caliber, and the USC was making them look like that. So there are there are some big problems on defense, but I'm more worried about the offensive situation because the offense, again, I've never seen. As we saw Caleb had that hiccup game against uh, or, um, Oregon State and come back out. I'm I'm hoping the same thing again. But this team, remember, we got Caleb Williams. So all you guys worried about our defense. We had a we had a worse defense last year, and Caleb carried us. So it's gonna be interesting to see playing Washington and Oregon on the schedule this time, what we can do. And playing in South Bend, not playing at home. I mean, just really quickly, you kind of covered, I, I pulled up some stats. Like, for instance, just being graded out, you know, Caleb, by far, his worst his worst game as a Trojan, uh, his PFF grade for offense was 62.2. You know, his passing numbers, I won't throw a guess at it, Mark. What do you think his PFF number was for passing? I don't even know what his numbers were, except he only, he barely threw for 200 yards, right? Yeah, 53.5. And it threw for, threw, threw for a little over north of 200 yards. And USC won this game. I know everyone wants to paint it as a loss. You know, even they've won the pay the last three games as losses. Uh, they're not. And you got you to be careful about making wins seem like losses. It's just there's no point to it. USC, if they play at this, is going to lose. But, you know, here's the thing. Even if USC plays like this, and even, by the way, the big thing was, well, if USC struggles, Kayla will pull them out, right? I want to flip the narrative. This defense is not is not going to win us games, but it was good enough on a night when our offense was terrible. You know, the offense was terrible, flat. I just gave you his PFF numbers, and yet they found a way to win. And I know our OU loving our our, our buddies out there, the OU people, want to talk about culture, but you know, it's it's difficult. I don't care who the opponent is to come down seventeen points and and come back and win the game. You know that that does show something about the team. Um, and realistically, this game should have. Let's talk about it. This game should have been right. We talk about triple overtime. They missed like a what a twenty yard field goal or a seventeen yard field goal at the end of the game. Otherwise, USC walks off as a sloppy game. USC won thirty one uh, to twenty eight, where Washington won thirty four twenty four, something like that. You know what I mean? There's not that much of a difference. The difference and the worry is is that the defense is better, but it's not going to be good enough against. I mean, I'm not real worried about Notre Dame, but I am worried about. Oregon at Autzen uh, and um, and in Washington, if they play like that again, I personally would be concerned with Notre Dame. 